This video was supported by Elegoo. Alright, so this is a proof of concept for an EDC multi-tool. I'm turning this into a series, so in the final episode, uh, hopefully we can print it in metal. Uh, any kind of support, you know, the suggestions and that kind of stuff in the comments really helps. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Alright, so a little while ago we made an EDC tool specifically for reverse engineering projects and like 3D printing stuff. And that has been working out really quite nicely, but there were some things that were kind of missing out of that EDC tool. It was really specifically built for me where if I start a project, sometimes I'm searching for like 10 minutes to, to get all the stuff I need to do it. And then as soon as I put something down again and start work on something else, it's disappeared again. So I really wanted it to be in a single tool. So yeah, when you start combining stuff, it becomes less useful for each specific task, but it does really help me uh, just getting started and doing this stuff when I still have that creative momentum going on, right? And I don't have a lot of time for these projects, so that's very important. But since that project, I've really had a couple new ideas about like a, a smaller version. And somebody also pointed out in the comment section to implement the caliper into the 3D print itself. And I thought that was a really smart idea, actually. So thank you for that. I also wanted to implement a pencil into this thing because it's, it's like the number one thing I keep losing and the number one thing I really need for like woodworking projects where, uh, you know, you need to mark out like the, the cuts you're going to make. After doing some research, I found this thing called a forever pencil, which is really cheap for some reason, but they're basically like metallic tips and they don't really run out. Uh, the only downside to it is that you can't erase it with an eraser, which isn't really a big problem for woodworking because you just sand it down anyway. At least I hope that's the case, but yeah. In combination with that, the tape measure is very important and how you actually use that tape measure. So currently, you know, you have to unroll it, uh, lock it into position, and then you can do the markings. But if you put that in a, a single hand, so to say, you unroll it and then you just turn it to where you can mark the location of the cut that you need to make. I think that would be pretty cool. And that's kind of what I wanted to implement into this design. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I think it's interesting to try it out. I bought myself an electric precision screwdriver. Uh, I first took off the peel at the end for the USB-C port, but there was nothing there. I expected to be some kind of screw there. But then, you know, just uh, unlatching the buttons, and that's really what holds this whole thing in place. Once you get those off, everything just slides out, which is, yeah, surprisingly, uh, shockingly easy to, to do. So at this point in the process, I put all the components down on the table and kind of figured out like a rough layout for this thing, figuring out like how do you hold it, where will all the bits go and that kind of stuff. And at this point in the process, I was really considering turning it into kind of a fidget toy because for some reason, like fidget toys are always really close by and I can always find them. So implementing a bearing into this thing and making it, you know, so that you can twist and turn it and, and do all kinds of uh, stuff with it. But then I also started to consider its usefulness. So if we add like a bearing into this thing, it takes quite a lot of room and it doesn't really add anything other than the fidgety capacity. But if we can make that fidgeting capacity something useful, that would be really nice. And I started to think about how a wrench operates. So it has that thumb wheel on the wrench, right? If we just take that thumb, thumb wheel and make it to a useful task, so you know, you could increase the length of the caliper and decrease the length of the caliper and also retain its wrench capacity at the same time, that would be really nice. So after I'd collected all those components, we could take it to the 3D scanning station. And, you know, I always feel like I should mention you, you don't have to do this. Like all the prior projects I did with a caliper and it just takes a little bit longer to input all of those measurements into the CAD software. But with a 3D scanner, you know, you just scan it and then every, all the measurements are there. So it's very useful for not having to do all those pre-checks and uh, pre-prints. So usually I'd have to print it out, test it, and then see if it fits and that kind of stuff. And in, in this way, I don't have to do that anymore. The 3D scans came in really useful for creating the entire casing, essentially. Also lining up where the buttons will go. Because we also scanned like the buttons, which is pretty incredible, actually, that it's able to scan such small components. And we got that right on the first try as well. But also for the teeth of the little thumb wheel, which will activate the caliper section. You know, I just copied the, the teeth that were already on the uh, wrench side of things and then duplicated them. Made like a really long wrench situation and put that in between the electric precision screwdriver and the battery for the electric precision screwdriver. So when you activate it, basically the USB-C port also becomes available, which might turn into kind of an issue, but I'm hoping that it will work and that it doesn't damage the USB-C port when we actually use it as a wrench as well. 
So at this point in the design, you can really see that it's still like really boxy and kind of, it looks kind of bad. Uh, after this, you know, I copy this design, keep it there for if there's any like major flaws that we can't fix after chamfering stuff. And yeah, as I start like cleaning up the design, thinking about ergonomics and that kind of stuff. And eventually you land on something like this. So the printer we're using for this project is the Mars 5 Ultra from Edigu. It's a 9K resin printer and I actually sent this out for this video, so special thanks to them. I uh, didn't pay for the, uh, for the machine, so keep that in mind. And, but I really appreciate the way that they reached out as well. They were just like, you know, they watched a couple of my videos, saw the build videos and were like, you know, you could use a resin printer to do some build videos. In terms of pricing, I'm also quite impressed because this machine costs 270 euros when it's on sale. And I feel like all of the components that were inside of this thing, like the 9K screen, the metallic housing, uh, the entire design as well, the AI camera, the, the VAT, which has like this tilt release system. I feel like that all costs quite a lot more than 270 euros. So if you would, if you were to buy one of these machines, I think you're getting a really good deal. Uh, in terms of that like tilt release system, I feel it works quite well. This is the first pr uh, resin printer I've had though, so I can't really speak to that. But I've heard other reviewers kind of say that that is a pretty nice innovation. The AI camera is also really awesome. You can uh, activate the feed via the Cheetu Box software. And when you're at work, for example, you can check up on your print. Don't recommend printing while you're at work, but it's something you could do. It also supports network sending. So that's what I did on this project. I just sliced it in the Cheetu Box software and sent it over to the printer. You still have to activate it though. It's not like one click printing where it immediately starts the print as well. That would be pretty awesome to have there. So that first test print came out looking pretty good and to my surprise like everything already somewhat like fit. Like I did miscalculate how the electric precision screwdriver would fit inside of it. So I had to slide it in through the top instead of through the back and that was my initial idea. But then the uh, buttons and that kind of stuff all fit in place quite nicely so that's all thanks to the 3D scanning tech right. If we didn't have that 3D scanner this would be a lot more like trial and error. And yeah, I went back to the CAD program, cleaned up some of the design flaws and printed it out again. As you can see, I really nailed my focus there. Great job, Justin. He also had a friend over and I was showing him the resin printer and also, you know, the entire process of how the resin printing works, even though I don't know it myself too well. But he pointed out that it really looked like a developing film. So when we were studying art at the Arts Academy together, You'd have like a, a dark room and we'd, we'd get lessons in developing film and that kind of stuff. It's a really relaxing process. You know, working with some chemicals, you really have to focus and that kind of stuff. And that's the only thing you can actually pay attention to. That's really nice. And this is the same kind of stuff. So I've been, yeah, I've been busy with a 3D print room. I'm probably gonna build it in a similar way to a dark room. Went through the exact same process with the main body as well and then we can start like putting this thing together. So what I started off by doing is inputting the electric precision screwdriver. So with the battery, you know, shoving it all the way through the design and then turning that battery around, making sure there's enough room there so you don't snag the cable and putting that into that second component over there. You have to push it in with a pencil in the end so that it actually reaches the end. But the electric precision screwdriver is then held in place with this little plate at the top and two bolts at the back of each component so they don't slide backwards either when you actually use them. And then the most infuriating part about this process again is that tape measure which has like an internal spring but sometimes if you mess up everything just kind of explodes and yeah you have to do the whole process of winding it up again and that's really <laughs> infuriating. After that I squeezed in some magnets for the little bits to go in place and there's no real method for holding these in place other than a magnet so to say so there's no casing around it or like no gap for it at all to hold it in the correct position but I was thinking about this and I think it's gonna act as a fidgeting tool so I have it right here and you just like you're playing around with the bits all the time. Not sure how that's gonna hold up when you put it inside of your pocket though so that is a concern I had. After that, I put a little thumb wheel in place and I wasn't really expecting this to work so you know, I just put an M4 bolt in, uh, in between there and there's actually supposed to be a nut on the other side as well. Couldn't get that in there so we'll have to fix that in the next version. But it actually works and I was really surprised that it worked because yeah, for some reason I didn't think it would but uh, you know, you actually 
screw it open and it and it's smooth and it doesn't take a lot of effort like sometimes it snags up like now it's going to snag up but then you press it a little bit harder and it's gonna it hasn't snapped yet either so here here you can see that it doesn't want to go any further and you give it a little bit of a little bit of a helping hand then it works again but the, the tape measure situation it looks really sketchy as if i'm just full of shit. but it actually works it, it's genuinely quite useful because it's one-handed as well the only problem is as you can see here it doesn't really go back in and uh, yeah that's because something in here is snagging it up which we'll have to fix so of course this is mainly like a proof of concept and i would actually really like to print this in metal in a future video so this is turning into a series and if you have any suggestions on the design then definitely let me know in the comments as well i'll always include your comment in the video if i use your your idea and yeah i hope you stick around for the next episode in this video i already have a couple of ideas like we still need to add the markings for the caliper side of things but also a knife to open boxes a little level which you know you could use to see if stuff is level or not yeah awesome stuff is coming down the line i uh, hope you enjoyed the video see you in the next one